Have I got an annoying hair sticking out? What the? Oh, that's <laughs> so annoying. Was it that? I'm sorry if I've got annoying hair today. It's just kind of do what he wants. Anyway, um... guys welcome to another kind of health video I wanted to just um, update you guys on my like physio journey and um, kind of this is I always say these health videos are for me as much as they're for anyone that it can help because it's my way of like logging things and I do often go back to my videos and kind of compare like and think about what happened then and what's happening now and stuff like that it's just because when you have health conditions that I have, um, there is so much every single day that goes into maintaining my illness, like into caring for myself. Um, it's exhausting. I do have days where I get really frustrated and fed up and upset and angry about the fact that I have to do so much just to feel half normal. Um, like some days I just get up and I just don't want to take any of my tablets and I don't want to do any any of my physio and I don't I just want to be like a normal healthy person my age and just be able to like walk around and not think about things I have to think about everything and it's really mentally draining um like at the moment you know I have like five pills I take as soon as I get up maybe more one two three four five six seven eight I actually have eight tablets that I take first thing in the morning with my breakfast um, I have to do two or three mindfulness exercises every single day I have to do three lots of physio every single day um, included in that they then want me to um, walk every single day um, like do it it's a really set walk um, not just like go and wander around like I go to a place that takes me five minutes exactly to get there and then I come back so it's a ten minute walk um which I can't do um and then I take like four tablets in the middle of the day and then eight more at night and it's just a lot and I have nose sprays and eye drops and at the moment I have special shampoos and uh, stuff for my scalp and then I also have stuff for my rash my skin problem on my face it's just too much it's overwhelming um, but today we're going to talk about physio um, and it's a hard one for me to talk about so I'll take you back to I think it was like October last year um, I saw my rheumatologist and he diagnosed me with fibromyalgia and the reason I got diagnosed with that is because I think it's because I keep telling every doctor that I see that I'm in constant pain and I'm constantly fatigued and that I'm yet to find anything that changes that. Um, I'm doing everything they're telling me and it's not helping and I'm also taking it upon myself to find things that aren't just medication or from the doctors like I'm finding my own ways of coping and my own ways of like e like trying to feel better and what works and what doesn't and at the moment I, I don't find things that work and I said that to him and I said that um I had discussed fibro with my GP because I'd looked into it and I'd spoken to a few people that have it and everyone was kind of saying it sounds like you have it and everything I read I was like ticking all the boxes so I spoke to my rheumatologist about it and he kind of did the, the like touch test thing where there's like certain points in your body that are like really really painful they're really random I think one's like here on your elbow um and they he was like pushing on places and telling me like to rate it with pain and stuff like that anyway then we had a long discussion about everything that I'd been feeling and because my blood tests keep coming back that my lupus at the moment is mild discussed it with my GP um, the fact that 
Okay, so my blood's are t saying that, but I feel very, very unwell. I think that that's what happens to people with lupus. I think even when your lupus is considered mild based solely on your blood tests, that you do still feel like crap all the time and you do still feel really, really unwell. Everything I've read from people that live with lupus says that and a lot of the stuff on the Lupus UK website kind of leans to the fact that lupus has kind of always been labelled, I think the phrase they use is like the great pretender because it can mimic other illnesses, there are many um, symptoms that cross over with other illnesses but also that your bloods can sometimes not be exactly reflective of how what's actually going on in your body and how your lupus is affecting you um, and I feel like that is what's happening with me but my doctor said well I think actually the reason you're in you're in so much pain all the time isn't because of your lupus it's because of your fibro which obviously adds a whole new dimension to looking after myself because I have to try and be in tune with is this a lupus flare or a fibro flare and do I treat you like this or do I treat you like that and yeah um the difference is is that like the thing is is that fibro and lupus are very very similar they have a lot of the same symptoms but lupus can kill me like it is life-threatening it can make my organs shut down um it's i don't want to say it's more serious than fibro because i don't want to at all play down fibro because it's its own horrific beast and it's awful to live with but i from what I've been told, I don't think fibro can kill you. It's not life-threatening, whereas lupus is. So the way I have to deal with them is very different. And so he said, I said, well, what do we do now then for pain? And he said, I think you really need physio. I think you need physiotherapy in order to be able to move more and be in less pain when you're moving and um, all of that kind of stuff. Because the thing is, is that like, I'll admit, that every time I walk or move um, my pain levels shoot through the roof so obviously any sane person would not want to put themselves through that so sometimes I do like decide to, to stay in and, and, and not move because why would I want to be like there's some days where I can't cope with more pain than my base level pain there just is I wake up my, my, my lowest my pain's ever at, I always say, is a five. So if I wake up at a five and I know if I go for a walk, it's going to shoot up to a ten and then that could last for days, the ten. Sometimes I can't handle that and I don't want to do it. Um, so obviously that's a part of it. And I also have to question every doctor's motives, motives um, with this stuff because a lot of them always do still have weight loss in their minds. Like they really want me to lose weight which is not at all on my agenda because I have too much to worry about like so I don't want I often worry are you just making me do these things because you you want me to lose weight and that's your main goal because I don't have any weight related problems because my um all my issues even with like because I know people say that joint problems are to do with your weight but that all started when I was at my thinnest, um, all my joint problems. Um, I was going to the doctors about that when I was at my thinnest and lightest. So it doesn't really make sense to me. Um, anyway, he wanted me to see, physio, to see a physiotherapist. So I went um, and I've been seeing them until now. And that's the reason it's hard for me because um, it's just kind of stopped without any telling me that it's going to stop or any telling me that it has stopped it's just stopped um which is very very weird and i know it's e it might be easy to say we'll just call them and be like why have you stopped but like i have to call a different hospital <laughs> nearly every day i, I just don't want to do it and I, don't, I feel like i am only going to get told oh yeah well you've been discharged and then i'll just get angry and upset so there's just no point it's more stress than i need but basically I saw my physiotherapist, he was very, very nice. At first I was a bit um, nervous about him being a man because physiotherapy that I've had in the past has included me having to get undressed and have massages and acupuncture and stuff like that. And all of that was on the table that I might get offered. Um, and um, I have a lot of issues still with 
strange men um, because of a sexual assault that happened to me years ago. So I was very worried, but he actually made me feel very, very comfortable. He was very, very sensitive to that and um, I was open about it. And he was very, very um, sensitive and soft-spoken and easygoing and it, it was fine. Um, we went into the gym on the uh, second session and um, first of all he got me on um, like a like a bar, like a ballet bar essentially to stand there and do a couple of exercises but he was always saying what's your pain now, what's your pain now, like tell me after every movement like where your pain is and I was finding those particular movements too painful. So then he bought out a yoga ball and I got really, really excited. I lit up because one of my favorite, it's one of my favorite Christmas presents ever. I got a yoga ball just because I, I was a dancer and I was a gymnast and my parents were like, she will absolutely love that. Like, and I did. And I, I learned how to like roll up on it from laying down to standing on it and balancing on it and then being able to stand on it on one leg. And I just loved it. I was <laughs> such a weird kid, but I just loved it. It was like the best thing ever. Um, till my big brother ran and jumped on it and popped it. Thanks, Sam. Um, yes, um, it was. So I got really excited when he brought it out, and I was like, "Oh my god, I haven't seen one of them in years!" Like, I loved using that as a kid, and um, so he was like, "Oh, good, good, because that's what we want. We want you to be doing movement that you enjoy, and it needs to be happy and relaxed and easy." Um, and he gave me a few exercises, and basically every week I'd go back, or every two weeks, sometimes if he was busy, I'd go back and he'd teach me more exercises with the ball. And I think in total I learned three, four five six seven eight I learned eight exercises in total on the ball um, and in the beginning it was just do this one exercise for 20 seconds but do that three times a day and then it was do two and then do three and then and then it was pick and choose like how much you can do on a day but always try and do at least one of the exercises three times a day and they were all just 20 seconds uh, very very small this is just as well gives you kind of an idea of like my limitations um, 20 seconds was all I could handle of each exercise before I was in too much pain so that's where we stopped he was like we're never going to make you have more pain so if you're in more pain we stop so I did that but we were doing that for ages and I wasn't seeing any improvement so I kind of said to him like I'm not seeing any improvements in my pain levels or my fatigue levels or like I'm not finding movement easier like I'm going out say to do my food shop and I'm still in just as much pain as I would be um, and I'm a bit confused about like how long do we keep doing this before we need to change it up to something and say that this isn't really working and it was really frustrating because the answer I always kind of got was like don't focus on goals you've always been too goal orientated in the past because I obviously spoke to him in the first session I had to talk about like before and after illness and I said you know that I was a, I was a dancer, gymnast, actress, I, I performed for a living, that's what I did and um, I've always been able to lift more than my weight on weight machines and sprint for an hour and do two gym classes that are high intensity back to back and found it all easy and now I can barely walk um, so it's a drastic change and that I'm bitter about that and I, I I do still find that hard and I struggle with it um and um that it's I want to be back there and everyone keeps telling me it's possible that I can get back to that being able to move that way without pain but like how and I kept saying that to him and he kept going don't focus on goals um because you've done competitive uh sport and stuff when you were little because I did um and I, I used to do dance competitions and gymnastics competitions and stuff like that and then um obviously when I was working auditions all the time and like he said all of it's very competitive in nature and um it's very driven and we don't want that for you we want you to be relaxed and to be easy so let's not focus on goals let's just keep going and in the beginning I thought okay he's saying that because he'll be tracking it he just doesn't want me to be tracking it because I've become quite obsessive over wanting to be able to move again fine I relaxed into it but then again time and time and time was passing like weeks and weeks and weeks and I was like this isn't like where do we go from here and I brought it up to him again and he was like I know I'll send you on this mindful movement class it's coming up it's um was it four or five weeks um and maybe it was six weeks 
six weeks, eight weeks. It was between four and eight weeks. I really can't remember. Um, he was like, we'll send you to that. Um, it's like all about moving mindfully, which is meant to like get your physiological um, responses to be settled and everything should be easy. And I was up for it. I'm up for anything that will help. I was like, yep, I'll try anything once. And I went and there was like no movement. <laughs> Um, he told me it'll be in the gym and the guy that's running it will like talk you through movement but mindfully and you'll learn about mindfulness and I was really excited and we went in the gym I think twice and very briefly and the rest of the time we were just kind of in an office back room on chairs and I must admit like I, I'm not that's not to say that I didn't find that helpful because I did in many ways and I continue to use it I continue to do mindful exercises I continue if I'm stressed to bring it back down to my breath and to calm myself down. And I do think it's working in terms of my happiness and my mental health, definitely. Um, I'm calmer, I'm letting stuff go. I'm, I'm having more of a kind of what will be, will be attitude. I'm not, I'm not thinking too much or obsessing about what I used to be able to do. I'm just happy that I can do what I still can do. So my attitude has definitely changed through the mindfulness group, but we d it wasn't what was advertised to me. Got a lot of a lot out of it, but um, not what I had gone there for, if that makes sense. Um, which was confusing and again quite frustrating to me. Like very very happy that I got what I got out of it, and it has been incredibly useful. But um, does it mean that now I move easier? No. Does it mean I have less pain or fatigue? No. And those that's what I went there for. And that's what I, what my doctor wanted for me and that's why he diagnosed me. Um, uh, sorry, that's why he referred me there. Um, so I did the mindful thing and in the end session we had to like fill out a kind of thing because the guy that's running it wants to have it taken to more hospitals, which I think is a brilliant idea. Um, for, for loads of different, there's loads of different people in there with loads of different um, problems and issues and illnesses or and mental health problems and everything and it was it was useful to all of us in different ways but still useful and helpful um, so you had to kind of fill out a like how did you find this type sheet which was fine and I did it and I gave it back but then there was another sheet that was like your stress in the last month and like your pain and stuff like that like um, this month I have been in pain most of the time, true or false, or on a scale of 1 to 10, how true is that, that type of thing. And it tweaked in me that that's what I filled out when I started physio. And I was like, oh my god, is this like the end sheet? Because any of these like classes I've done, sessions I've done, where it's like 8 week courses and I've done a lot now, for different things um normally you fill out a sheet at the beginning you fill out a sheet at the end and that's what they'll use to prove that it helps people um but the questions weren't relevant to what it helped me with because they were about my pain and my movement and it hadn't helped with that so um i, f I did say to the guy like i feel like this is quite harsh like because it's not really reflective of the way this has helped me but i'm being honest that it hasn't helped me with my movement or my pain um and then I just haven't heard back from them ever again. And the last time I saw, this makes it even weirder, the last time I saw my physiotherapist, I went into the last session, it was to be my last session before the mindful class, and he didn't come out, and then 15 minutes late, he came out and went, oh, reception didn't tell me you're here, and now it's too late, I've got to go. Even though I'm normally with him for 30 to 45 minutes, so I was like, can't we do like at least 15 minutes or something and he was like no I've really got to go and to me it was obvious because all the physiotherapists were packing up and leaving like they're packing up their stuff going in the office they're all chatting grabbing their bags and leaving and I think he just wanted to go home so he was like no I can't sorry and we were just kind of sat there like we've come all this way it's not near my house um we've come all this way and sat here waiting for you for 20 minutes for you to come out and be like oh sorry bye and then he was like oh if you have any questions about the mindful thing whilst it's going on just call and I was like okay and that's only where he left it and then i've never heard back since so yeah very very strange i continue to do my ball exercises because i don't know maybe this shit takes over a year <laughs> who knows no one's telling me and anyway i saw my rheumatologist recently and i discussed it with him and said look this is what's happened and no one's got back to me is that right like should i be keep keep being told no there's no goal no and he was like no the goal is to you for you to be able to move pain free and to have less pain and fatigue and i was like well that's what i kept saying but he kept insisting that's not the way they do it and that's not and he was like that's not good enough you need to call them but 
it's really put me off. I feel like how awkward is that to go back to him and say, oh, my rheumatologist said you didn't do your job and it's not good enough and we need to start again. So I now am thinking that I might pay out of my own money to do it privately, um, which is expensive and I'm very like lucky and privileged to be able to do that. But I do feel like um, there's a phys physiotherapist I went to for a car accident a long time ago and then when I first got ill I paid for a couple of sessions there um, because I'd liked it so much with the car accident I didn't have to pay then with the car accident because it, it wasn't my fault um, but then I paid uh, and I had acupuncture and stuff and, and, and massage and stuff when I first got ill and I didn't know what was going on and I thought oh maybe I've just injured myself at work um, because my jobs were very physical okay I'll get a massage and some acupuncture um, and I just really like it there, they're really, really good. So, And they've also got a hydrotherapy pool, which is, I could have had that and I asked for it and my physio was like, yeah, yeah, but let's see how we get on and then just never referred me for it. And that really annoyed me as well because hydrotherapy pools are meant to be very, very good for fibro. So all of it's been very frustrating and not very helpful and now I'm going to move forward with maybe pursuing the private route because I do also want to have massage and, and um, acupuncture again especially for my migraines and the fact that I'm convinced I have like nerve damage which is something I'll be pursuing in a few weeks time with my neurologist but that's it for this video that was my physio journey um, please let me know if you've had physio for fibro how you got on and what you found um, and if there's anything you think I should try uh, let's help each other in the comments I hope you're all having a lovely day and I will see you in the next video Bye.